Do you want to highlight or point out something in your video in iMovie? Maybe you've recorded a screen tutorial in QuickTime Player and want to draw attention to something in the interface. Or maybe you're editing an instructional video and want to point out an important detail in your B-roll. Well, whatever it is, I'm going to show you a simple Apple Keynote hack that makes highlighting anything in your iMovie project incredibly easy. The best part? You just need to set this up once and then you can reuse it over and over again. Let's jump in. All right, this is a Keynote hack, so we'll start here in Apple Keynote. I'll create a new project using the basic black theme. I'll hit Create, and I get the default slide. I'll select and delete all the default text on the slide. All right, we have a blank slide. I'm going to duplicate this slide a few times by selecting it here in the Slide Navigator, and then hitting Command-C, and then Command-V on my keyboard to copy it. I'll do that a couple times. All right, I got a few copies there. I'm going to go back and select this first slide. So what we're going to do here in Keynote is create a series of annotation or callout graphics that we'll use in iMovie to highlight parts of our video. All right, so with this first slide selected, I'll go up to Keynote's top toolbar and select the Shape button. And for our first callout graphic, I'm going to select a circle. All right, I'm going to turn this circle into a ring to circle things in my video. So with it selected, I'll go over to the inspector and under Format Style, I'll go down to Fill and select the menu that says Color Fill and from the list, select No Fill. Now, I just have the outline of the circle. So still in the inspector, I'll go down to Border and from the menu that says No Border, I'll select Line and my circle disappears. It's still there, it's just that the line is black and the slide background is black, so can't see anything. So I'll select the color ball right here, the color picker, and up comes the color selector. I'll select this lemon yellow for the line color. I find that yellow pops pretty well on screen. I'm gonna increase the thickness of the line by entering a new value in this point settings. I'll change it from five to 120 points and hit return. Now I'm going to make my circle bigger by clicking and dragging on these corner points. I'm going to hold down the shift key on my keyboard to constrain the circle to a circle. And I'll make it almost as big as the slide. I don't want to cut any of it off, so make sure it doesn't go outside of the slide here. All right, that looks good. So that is our first callout graphic, a circle or a ring, I guess. The next callout graphic is going to be a variation of this circle. So I'll just right click on the circle slide and from the menu, select duplicate and I get another slide with a circle. So with that second slide selected in the slide navigator, I'll click on the circle to select it. Then I'm going to drag out these side points on the bounding box until my circle is an oval that covers the slide. All right, there we go. All right, I'm gonna quickly create a square and a rectangle callout graphic using the same methods. All right, now for this fifth slide here, I'm gonna create an arrow call out graphics. So with that fifth slide selected, I'll go back up and select the shape button. And this time from the menu, I'll select this arrow shape over here. And I'll drag out these corner points on the arrow to have it cover most of the slide. Now, unlike the other shapes I modified, I'm not going to hold down the shift key while I modify this arrow. That allows me to change the proportions of the arrow as I enlarge it. So I'll make the tail of the arrow a little longer than the default. And I can make minor adjustments by dragging these other handles here. All right, I have my arrow. I'm going to change its color by going back into the inspector under Format Style, down to Fill. I'll leave Color Fill on and click on the Color Picker ball there. And from the Color Picker, choose my lemon yellow again 
and I have a big yellow arrow. <laughs> All right, I'm going to duplicate this slide by selecting it then hitting Command C, Command V. I'm going to select this duplicate arrow and make it into a 45 degree down pointing arrow by hovering over this corner point here, then holding down the Command key on my keyboard, which allows me to rotate the arrow. Now I'm going to also hold down the Shift key at the same time, which allows me to rotate in 15 degree increments, which saves some time. All right, now part of the arrow is outside the slide boundary, so I'm just going to shrink it down until it fits onto the slide. I'm going to zoom out of the slide using Command less than, then adjust my arrow. All right, the last callout graphic I'm going to create is going to use an emoji. So to do that, I first need to add a text box to my slide. So I'll select my slide, the last slide here in the navigator. Then I'm going to go up to the toolbar and this time select the text button. And that adds a text box to the middle of the slide. So next I'll bring up the character viewer using the keyboard shortcut control command spacebar. And these are all the different characters available on Mac OS, including emojis. So I'm just going to go here and double click the yellow pointing finger emoji. And that emoji character appears in the text box on the slide, but it's really small. So to make it bigger, I'll make sure it's selected, then go over to the inspector and under text, go down to the point size field and I'm going to enter in 600 points and hit enter or return. And now the pointing emoji is bigger. Now you don't want to go too big with the point size or the emoji will start looking blurry and blocky because it's a bitmap image. All right, I can also rotate this emoji if I want to by hovering over one of these points while holding down the command key or command plus the shift. All right, I have all my callout shapes for this demo. So the next step will be to export all of these shapes out of Keynote as separate graphics with transparent backgrounds. So I can overlay them over my footage in iMovie. But before we get to that, if you're finding this tutorial helpful, go ahead and hit that like button. It really helps the channel. And if you want more Mac video editing tutorials and hacks and tricks like this, make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss the next one. All right, let's get back to it. All right, to export these shapes as overlay graphics with transparent backgrounds, I need to execute one very important step. I need to make all of the backgrounds of these slides transparent. So I'll select all of my slides here in the navigator. Then I'll go over to the inspector and under the slide properties, I'll go down to the background section and where it says current fill, I'll select the menu that says color fill and from the choices, select no fill. That removes the backgrounds of all my slides, making them transparent. All right, now I can export all these slides as graphics. So to do that, I'll go up to Keynote's top menu and select File, Export to Images. And in the Export Settings, I'll leave Slides set to All because I want to export all of my slides, all of these graphics. So I'll leave Format as PNG because PNG files can have transparency. But I will make sure Export with Transparent Backgrounds is checked. Very important. Or if I don't have that checked, my graphics will not have transparent backgrounds, which is what I want. All right, I'll hit save. I'll find a location, name the folder for the exported files, and hit export. And I'll see you over in iMovie. All right, so here we are in iMovie, and I have this project open with some example clips on the timeline. I'm just going to bring over the finder here so you can see the callout graphics I exported out of Keynote. Keynote creates a folder with the file name that you enter on export and places all of the exported graphics or slides into that folder. So you can see all of them here. All right, I'm going to select all of these PNG graphic files and drag and drop them into the clips event 
in my iMovie project. And iMovie imports the files. All right, now all I have to do is grab the callout graphic that I want to use. So I'm going to use this down angle arrow as an example, and I'm going to place it on the overlay track above the footage that I want to highlight. And there it is. Now, of course, that's not what I'm going for. I want to be able to place the arrow where I want to over my footage. Right now, it takes up the whole screen. So with the arrow graphic selected, I'll go up to the toolbar above the viewer and select the Video Overlay Settings button. And from the menu over here that says Cutaway, I'll select Picture and Picture. And my arrow shrinks down, and I can click and drag on it to move it around the frame. I can also change its size by clicking and dragging on these corner handles. Now, there are a few tricks I want to show you for adjusting your picture in picture graphic. This also works for picture in picture videos, by the way. All right, if you hold down the Shift key on your keyboard while dragging on these points, you can distort the object. All right, I'll hit Command Z or Command Z on my keyboard to undo that. Now, if you hold down the Option key on your keyboard while dragging on these points, you can scale the object from its center. You can also do something else. While holding down the Option key, if I drag up or down, I actually flip the object horizontally. Likewise, if I drag left or right, I flip the object vertically. So I can make this one arrow I made in Keynote point in four different directions. Now, if you need to start over, just go over here and hit the Reset button, and the object will go back to its default size, and you can resize it again. Now, the other cool thing about Picture-in-Picture -picture mode is that it comes with a default dissolve transition, as you can see. So your callout graphic comes on smoothly, which looks more professional. Now you can adjust the dissolve duration up here in this field beside dissolve. Or you can adjust it directly on the picture in picture clip down here on the timeline by clicking and dragging on these little blue handles. And you can reuse these callout graphics in other iMovie projects by simply copying and pasting them. Now, you're probably going to need to play around a little bit with the size and orientation of your specific callout graphics in Keynote, depending on your specific project. But as you saw, creating them is super quick. Now, if you want to take your highlight or callout graphics to the next level by animating them right inside of iMovie, I've got you covered with this video right here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.